So good morning um, and thank you for joining me for this online service of Holy Communion recorded here at St Mary's Church in Barrow. I am delighted to say that Marion will be preaching for us later in this service as well. So thank you to Marion. So we take a moment now, um, wherever we are, um, whether we're in our homes or sitting in a chair, whatever we're doing, just to pause and to come into God's presence. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise his presence with us. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship together. So we're going to worship now in song. And one of the pluses of watching this online is that singing is back on the programme. So please do feel free to sing to your heart's content to this first hymn, which is To God Be the Glory. Come to our prayer of preparation. So let us pray together. 
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him as we come to confess our sins to Almighty God. We pause for a moment of silence to bring to mind those things that we need to confess today. we say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say the words of the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for this Sunday. Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us from apathy. Restrain us from excess. And revive us in new hope that all creation will one day be healed. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. John will now bring us our first reading from 1 Thessalonians. The first reading is from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Now concerning how and when all this will happen, dear brothers and sisters, we don't really need to write to you. For you know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly like a thief in the night. When people are saying everything is peaceful and secure, then disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labour pains begin, and there will be no escape. But you aren't in the dark about these things, dear brothers and sisters, and you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief. For you are all children of the light and of the day. You don't belong to darkness and night, So be on your guard, not asleep like the others. Stay alert and be clear-headed. Night is the time when people sleep and drinkers get drunk. But let us who live in the light be clear-headed, protected by the armour of faith and love, and wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation. For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour out his anger on us. 
Christ died for us so that whether we are dead or alive, when he returns, we can live with him forever. So encourage each other and build each other up, just as you are already doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to have our second hymn now, which is Light of the World. Richard is now going to read our gospel reading from the Gospel of Matthew. The second reading is taken from Matthew chapter 25, beginning to read at chapter, uh, verse 14. Again, it would be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one, he gave five bags of gold 
to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five gold uh, bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers, so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So, take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to concentrate on the parable from St. Matthew for this talk. It's a strange parable. Initially, it appears to be about money, but I don't think this parable hinges on what we do with money or even what talents we have, although both are very useful in ministry. This parable centers really on the third servant, the one who did not make a profit, but hid the money in order to return it. And as a consequence, the landowner, very angry, took the money from him, gave it to the one who had doubled the five bags of gold, and then rubbed salt into the wound by throwing the man out. Now, that seems very unfair to me, I'm not sure I would have gambled with just one bag of gold when my counterpart could have just gathered, gambled with a little bit and still had some left. So I wonder, what is Jesus talking about, if not about investments or how we spend money? Of course, he had a habit of turning things upside down, of not taking people or events at face value, but looking beneath the surface. He didn't veer away from those on the edge of society and was often seen with the prostitutes, thieves, cheats, and it seems many of them responded in a really positive way. On the other hand, his harsh, harshest condemnation was often turned towards the Pharisees, people in places of power, and those who were afraid or simply didn't see the need to take risks with their lifestyle. Pharisees, of course, were a religious group of people, but over the years had made so many rules and regulations attached to worship that their lives and that sometimes must hang on, worship and their lives sometimes must have been it must have been hard to find God in anything they did. It was as if they were hiding behind the rules to avoid looking at themselves or taking risks. In another parable in Luke 
18, Jesus makes a blistering attack on them. He says, two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He did not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you, this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. So how do we relate to this passage? As a Christian, faith in God takes courage because we really have to look at ourselves and examine how we live and then sort the good aspects from those which need improvement. And that can be a painful experience if we then realise we're not always doing as we should. Jesus expects us to take risks, the risk of telling others the risk may be of being thought a little odd, the risk of being ridiculed, small price in comparison when some Christians today are persecuted or killed because of their faith. And when we think of Jesus giving his life for us on the cross. What happens when we take the risk, when we speak about our faith and the person immediately changes the subject? It can leave us feeling that we have failed, fallen flat on our faces. But God picks us up, dusts us off, ready to try again. It would be all too easy to join the people who say, I am a Christian, I go to church on Sunday, but then for the rest of the week, forget about Jesus. It's almost as at times as if people just pop Jesus in their pocket He's tucked away like a comfort blanket for the times he's needed, on standby, yet hidden from Monday to Saturday. And then on Sunday, off they go to church, meeting with like-minded people. And I think it's a trap that we don't really want to fall into. We are all called to share the gospel in whatever way we can. And if we keep Jesus hidden, our spiritual growth becomes stunted. We just fail to grow spiritually. I know talking about Jesus can feel difficult, but we are given opportunities. For instance, quite often people will say, did you do at the weekend? Or what have you got planned for the weekend? And that gives us an opening. You can say, well, I'm going to church or I went to church and could maybe tell them something about what happened at church. Something like that, but it gives us an opening. Or maybe you might decide to wear a little cross or a dove on your coat. And again, that can open a conversation. Maybe we could give a Bible at Christmas to a child or indeed to an adult. Or maybe one of those colouring books for adults about Jesus. We all have more and more time on our hands at present, so at least it would give everyone something to do. And it would help us to introduce or reintroduce Jesus to our friends and families. Let me just go back to those small brooches. I want to tell you a little story. During my nursing career, I worked in the community for over 17 years, mainly in Dunstable and the surrounding areas. And as a nurse, I had to abide by the professional code of conduct. One section stated, make sure you do not express personal beliefs, including political, religious or moral beliefs. But I always wanted to show my belief. So I wore either a dove or a little uh, cross on my cardigan. And it gave me the opportunity, patient initiated at times, to talk about my faith. But it also led in me into an unexpected time. On a visit to one of my regular patients, sadly he was terminally ill, he asked why I wore the dove. And I said, well, because I'm a Christian. Oh, good, he said. And he handed me a hymn book and said, sing Rock of Ages. Well, if you knew my singing voice, <laughs> I felt my heart and the colour from my face drain. But 
I had a student with me called Dawn and Dawn was very obedient and would do anything I asked her. So I said to Dawn, come on, come over here. I called his wife and the three of us sang to him. Several days later, he died. That is the one and only time I ever sang to a patient, but honestly, he really found it gave him comfort, even with my croaky old voice. And the point I want to make is we need to be ready when someone asks a question. Be prepared to talk about our faith and not to worry about finding the right words, just speak from the heart. And if, like mine, your voice isn't the best, hopefully you won't be asked to sing. We really don't want to be the salt that loses its saltiness. Instead, we want to be like the city on the hill or the lamp on the lampstand. By word, actions and deeds, we can show the light of Christ to those around us. We don't need to keep Jesus in our pockets. With our lives firmly rooted in him, let his light shine out from each and every one of us. And no, I'm not going to sing this little light of mine. And we affirm our faith together now as we say the words of the creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Judith will now lead us in our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. I will leave a period of silence after each prayer for your own prayers. Gracious Spirit, inspirer of all, we come to be still in your presence, to hear in the silence the whisper of God, breathing life into our souls, deepening our unity in the very life of God. Spirit of God, source of love, constantly remind us that the gifts we possess are meant for others and that if we do not have love, they have no value. Start a fire of love within us and convince us that we must use the gifts you have given us. Help us to use all our opportunities wisely that we may share through service to others the good gifts we have received from you. Holy God, in calling forth creation from the void, revealing yourself in human flesh and pouring forth your wisdom to guide us, you manifest your concern for your whole universe. You invite us as your people to pray for the world which you love and for which Christ gave his life, to gather this world's needs into our hearts and bring them before you. We pray for all who have lost their way in life. Help us to welcome them and tell them the good news to live for.
we pray for those who are imprisoned because of their conviction, all those who are persecuted for their faith. We pray for all people driven from their homes, the many victims of war and civil strife, all strangers living in foreign lands. We pray for all those who are hungry those who still do not have running water or the dignity of proper toilets. Lord, we lift up to your healing hands those we know who are sick or in distress. We ask your blessing on all those who care for the sick and the handicapped. Doctors, nurses, pharmacists, midwives. We pray for those working on and trialling the vaccines for COVID-19 especially those in the United Hospitals of Bristol and Weston. Lord, we ask you to be with those who draw near to death and for those who mourn especially at this time with all the restrictions of COVID. Father God, we thank you that you listen to your children's prayers. Accept these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. God will speak peace to his people, to those who turn to him in their hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Maybe if we are with other people at this time, we would like to offer them a sign of peace. Or if you are on your own, then hold the peace of God in your heart and maybe bring to mind one person who you would like to pray God's peace for at this time. We now come to our offertory hymn, um, which is, Oh, the Deep, Deep Love of Jesus. And it's to a familiar tune, which you'll probably recognise is actually the tune of Morning Has Broken. So we sing that now. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus, best on
with this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood. Gifts from God to his table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from death and sin. Your word goes out to call us home, to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the Highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the Highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, This is my body, my blood shed for you all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, Jesus rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and the whole world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray now. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. God, you are everything to us, giving us life, filling us with love, and setting us free from sin, that we might live in you. Accept the work of our hands this day. Take our lives. Give us your peace. And renew us in the service of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We have our final hymn now, which is Forth in Thy Name, O Lord, I Go.
the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love and pray for, now and always. Amen. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.